This is the EXC1, which is one of two super affordable cross-country electric mountain bikes from Denago. So as the more entry-level model, how does this bike perform? Let's take a ride and find out. Hey everyone, I'm John with Electric Bike Report. And before we get into the review, I just wanna remind you to hit that subscribe button and the bell icon down below, especially if you're in the market for an e-bike. We release new reviews all the time. We're also gonna be doing some more e-bike giveaways soon. So once you subscribe, you can be one of the first to know when we release new content. So for this review, we're gonna focus primarily on the EXC1 here, although we are also currently reviewing the EXC2. I'll talk about a few of the key differences here and there, but stay tuned for the full review of the higher end model that we'll be releasing soon. One huge feature on this bike is the Bafung M410 mid-drive motor with 250 watts of nominal output, as well as 80 Newton meters of torque. This is Bafung's base level motor for mountain bikes. It doesn't have as much torque as the M510 on the EXC2, but it still felt powerful and steady. It was tuned to be able to give a natural feeling boost as soon as I pedaled harder. It did a great job climbing, and overall it felt nice and smooth. Another thing that stood out to us was the bike's geometry. It's not uncommon for more affordable bikes and newer bike brands to be a little bit off with their geometry, but the reach, the head tube angle, and the seat tube angle were all right where they needed to be for a functional trail bike. We thought it felt great on beginner to intermediate level single track, and that leads me to the next point. The EXC1 just has seriously great value. Right now, it's priced between $2,500 and $3,000, and we definitely expected $3,000 to be about the minimum here. There's definitely a lot of bang for the buck. The component package is solid, and the overall ride feel is right up there as well. You don't have to take my word for it, though. Let's run through the rest of the specs just to prove the point. So we talked about the motor, but the battery is a removable 48 volt, 499 watt hour unit that's integrated into the down tube. The bike comes with a three amp fast charger to power that up in about three and a half hours. And the battery is UL2271 certified, plus the bike itself is UL2849 certified. There's a mixed Shimano nine speed drivetrain here with a 40 tooth chainring and an 11 to 32 tooth cassette. That uses an Altus shifter and cassette with an Olivio Shadow Plus derailleur, as well as a KMC chain. The brakes are the familiar Tektro E350 hydraulic system with 180 millimeter rotors and dual piston calipers. We were pretty stoked to see the 29 inch wheels with 2.4 inch wide Maxxis Ardent tires. Those have EXO protection on the sidewalls that are cut and abrasion resistant. There's also an SR Suntour XCM32 suspension fork up front with 100 millimeters of travel. There's a custom Denago saddle, and that's really about it except for the cockpit. There are three frame sizes for the EXC1, a medium, a large, and an extra large. The medium has 740 millimeter wide handlebars, but the other two sizes, and we have the large frame here, they come with 780 millimeter bars. There are the Tektro brake levers, a rapid fire shifter on the right, and then the bike doesn't include a display, but instead it uses a series of LED indicator lights on the control panel on the left bar to indicate the battery charge level and your PAS setting. So all in all, a pretty clean and straightforward package of components. I was really happy to see that even at this price point, everything here is still a name brand. But anyway, let's move on to the fun stuff and see how the bike performed. 
As a class one e-bike, the top speed on the EXC1 is 20 miles per hour. For our brake test, we pedaled the bike up to that limit and then hit the brakes to see how far it would travel as it came to a complete stop. We did this three times and used those measurements to calculate an average, which in this case was 25 feet and three inches. So it was really interesting to me that we got exactly the same result with the EXC1 as we did with a similar bike that also used the Tektro E350 hydraulic brake system. That tells me that the brakes are generally pretty consistent, even if the result here was about three feet beyond our average. Things are always shifting around a bit as we test more bikes, but right now the average for all the EMTBs we've tested is an even 22 feet. On paper, that probably doesn't look or sound too great, but feel is equally important, and we were actually really happy with how these performed out on the trails. Even in a couple situations where I needed to slam on the brakes to avoid some sketchy washed out areas, they did great, so we're comfortable saying that these brakes are safe and effective. If you're riding really technical trails, you might want to consider upgrading to a four piston setup at some point, but on smoother single track, we definitely don't think you'll be disappointed with these. I took the EXC1 out for a speed test on our local bike paths, so let's go find out how fast it went in each of its five pedal assist settings. Okay, so we are here on the Denago EXC1 to do a speed test. Going right here with no help from the motor, kind of between 11 and a half and 12 miles per hour. Let's bump that up to PAS1. And there's like a very slight whine from the motor, but overall it's very quiet. It does make pedaling a little bit easier here. Getting up to about uh, 14 miles per hour, maybe 14 and a half. Let's bump up to PAS2. Switch up to sixth gear here, and we'll get around this bend. This feels very, you know, comfortable and easy, very smooth. Kind of right around 17, 16 and a half, 17 miles per hour from the looks of things bump up to PAS3. Morning. Uh, it doesn't feel a whole lot different in this setting. I did switch up to 8th gear here, but let's see. Yeah, I guess we're getting a little extra speed, kind of going around 18 miles per hour here, maybe 18 and a half. Let's bump up to PAS4. That definitely feels like a difference. Shift up into ninth gear. Yeah, I mean, pedaling is very smooth and easy here. Going kind of right around 19 and a half miles per hour. Let's jump up to the highest setting, PAS5. And that again, doesn't really feel a whole lot different, uh, but that makes sense with the 20 mile per hour speed limit here. So again, with, with no display on the bike, just going by this, kind of getting right about the same speed. You know, I guess we are hitting 20 miles per hour, but not a, a whole lot of difference there. So, okay, that is our speed test on the Denago EXC1. So my goal here wasn't to push the EXC1 to the max in each setting. I tried to pedal with a low to moderate level of effort to get sort of a baseline. With a torque sensor, you aren't really limited in your speed in each setting, and the motor gives you more or less power depending on how hard you pedal, so your results might be a bit different than mine. With no help from the motor, I hit a max of 11.9 miles per hour. The bike weighs 57 pounds, and it's pretty balanced, so really that felt pretty comfortable. PAS1 made a nice difference. I hit 14.2 miles per hour there, and then 17.1 miles per hour in PAS2. PAS3 didn't feel a whole lot different, but I did get a boost up to 18.3 miles per hour, and then PAS4 brought me up to 19.9. .9. With the 20 mile per hour limit, there was almost no difference at all in PAS5, at least on flat ground, but I did notice a pretty significant difference on hills. 
So PAS5 aside, the data from this test shows a really even distribution of speed and power between settings, and I think that was really apparent out on the trails. That pattern is exactly what we want to see in this test, just because it means you get the right amount of power you expect from each setting. We really liked the feel of each setting when we took the bike out on single track. PAS 1 and 2 kept things pretty light for a bit more of a workout. I found myself riding mostly in PAS 3 or 4, and then depending on the section of trail, bumping up to PAS 5 helped me climb some pretty steep hills. We were pretty impressed with the EXC1 in our range test. We rode it in PAS1 and PAS5 until the battery died, and we used Strava to track the total distance we covered. That turned out to be between 32.2 and 83.4 miles, plus our tests took between an hour and 58 minutes and seven hours and seven minutes, so it's definitely possible to get in some serious time and distance on the bike between charges. Since the EXC1 is going to be more comfortable on light to moderate trails, we think a lot of riders are just as likely to take it out on the street, and we did our range testing on paved bike paths. If you do tend to stick with trails, your range will probably end up a bit different from ours, and that'll vary depending on the difficulty of terrain, how many hills there are, what PAS setting you use, and quite a few other things. We recommend doing your own range test to see how the bike does in your area, but I think you'll be pretty happy. The EXC1 did a really great job in comparison to all of the similar EMTBs we've tested, definitely right in line with most of the competition, as well as our expectations. If you do find yourself with some range anxiety, the EXC2 model has a higher battery capacity of 720 watt hours, uh, as opposed to the 499 we have here for a little better range. But either way, with that fast charger, you'll be ready to rock and roll again in just a few hours if you run out of juice. For our hill test, I'll pass you over to Justin, who takes every bike up the path at Hellhole Trail. He tested the EXC1 in PAS5 to see how well it climbed, so let's see how it did. Okay, so I'm on the Denago EXC1, the first Hartel EMTB. And I'm on the, it has that Fang M410 mid-drive motor. So we'll see how we do. Um, so far, film fairly decent. There was a slight delay in motor engagement when I, when I downshifted. Yeah, so did that again. Um, so that's probably going to reflect in the time a little bit, but I am trying to keep a decent pedal cadence through here. I'm not getting off the saddle. I'm not cranking it too hard to kind of stay consistent. So I do have to shift sometimes. And that's going to kind of affect this a little bit. Um, as we go through this next session, I will let you listen to that motor. little wine kind of on like the high end but soft um it's not bad and overall it feels pretty good and solid through this feels like it has decent power and yeah no real problems climbing this hill other than that slight disengagement of the motor as you shift um you notice that i feel sometimes so we'll see what the results are. Here again, the EXC1 did a solid job and totally kept pace with many of its peers. That pause in motor output when shifting slowed things down a bit, but Justin was able to reach the top of the path in one minute and 39 seconds and maintained an average speed of 11 miles per hour. That's a great result for a 250 watt mid drive with 80 newton meters of torque and it landed on the high end of average when compared to the other EMTBs we've tested. That's about what we expected from Denago. They tend to make bikes that handle hills very well, and the EXC1 was definitely no different. Out in the desert, it did a solid job as well. 
The motor had enough power to handle some pretty chunky climbs, and with the Maxxis Ardent tires, it did really well on loose dirt and gravel as well. The gearing range is a little limiting with just 32 teeth on the largest cog, but the extra power from PAS5 kind of helped to make up for that a bit. I'm gonna pass you over to Justin one more time so he can give his impressions of the EXE1's ride quality. I'll see you back here shortly to wrap things up. All right, we are out on the trail with the Dinago EXC1. This is their entry level EMTD. It has the Bafang M410 motor, 80 newton meters of torque, has 29 inch tires, uh, the Maxxis Ardent 2.4 inch thick, and you know, the brakes. We're gonna really kind of test them out here and see how they do on single track. We're also going to really test this fork. It's the Suntour XCN32, and get a get a good good idea on how it feels through some of this more smooth single track. And then there's also some bumpy single track out here. Um, right off the bat, just from like a geometry standpoint, I really like the overall feel. Um, with the reach and the width of the handlebars. I apologize, I don't have the specs off the top of my head. We'll talk about that in the review. But it feels, it feels like there's good reach and it feels like it's just kind of good modern geometry in general. Um, so climbing this hill, one thing that I'm noticing kind of right off the bat is as I shifted climbing, there was a slight delay in the motor where the motor essentially kind of kicks off for just a split second. And that's kind of there as a safety precaution so you don't snap a chain or kind of just grind your gears and wear down that cassette and you know, you drive train in general. I'm not sure if I'm a fan of it. Here, it was okay climbing that trail. We'll test that ag out again. So going downhill here. Kind of washed out on the section. Forks handling this just fine. The Shimano Alivio. It, gear set is kind of their Shimano's entry level. And so I am hearing it bounce around on the tail a little bit, given the hardtail bike at that entry level. You wear it, your your cassette. Power-wise, I'm I was not expecting the the motor to feel as good as it does. I am feeling those 80 newton meters of torque. Feels pretty smooth, engagement wise. When I start to pedal, it kicks in pretty immediately. When I stop, it stops. There's not a lag. The you know I've kind of been. I will say one thing. It's a little hard to see the power levels. I think I'm in kind of the fourth one right now. I just kicked it to turbo. Find a good stretch where I can kind of try them all out. But in general, I'm pretty happy with the motor. There's a little bit of a whine to it, but it's pretty quiet. So, let's see how it does in this rock section here. Okay. Yeah, we're gonna roll that and we're gonna see what it feels like. It's the first time riding this trail for me. So, it's a good, you know, see what, see what you come up on type scenario. So yeah, I rolled through that just fine. Um, I will say I wish it did have a seat post dropper. The XC2 has one. Um, just going a little more 
old school or fast. Some of the XC guys on our mountain bike team, they don't like to see post drop because they don't feel they need it. But I do like post drop you can definitely add that. And yeah, so first take out on the trail is, this is pretty fun actually. Um, I would say suspension wise, you're totally fine on a trail like this with what it has. Haven't found a jump or anything to like really stress it, but I've, I've tested this fork before and it can handle it. It just won't be super cushion and super plush. So yeah, I'm gonna find a spot where we can really kind of push that motor and I'll come back. All right, so now I'm gonna kind of try to give you an idea of what the motor feels like as I go up this double track. It's just kind of like a longer semi, not super steep, but it's definitely an uphill. Starting out without any power, um, I don't feel a lot of drag on the motor, which is nice. I feel a little bit, but it's hard to differentiate between the drag and the weight. Um, it's not too bad, so let's kick it up to one. Again, it's hard to tell actually what assist level I'm in. So here's one. So I'm filling in one for sure, not a ton. Two. Not feeling a massive difference between those two. Three. Feel more in three. Kind of feel like this is a, this is one where you'd probably be in a lot. So four. And we're also going to check the suspension. Definitely bumpy through there. Front fork's not doing bad though. Oh yeah, you, as you go over rocky stuff, you hear the chatter. You feel it a little bit, but just use your arms. So now I'm going to kick it up in the turbo. So in general, pretty happy with how the motor feels at all assist levels. There's definitely a difference between them with, with kind of output on that motor. But it's smooth. It, it, I think the Fang's done a really good job here, even though this is their more entry level mountain bike motor. I'm pretty happy with it. So overall ride quality, I'd say this surprised me a little bit. Um, my own bias, I'm not a huge fan of hardtails, but you know, I also didn't grow up riding a hardtail, so I think those of you that did, for those that just ride trails like this, you're gonna be totally fine on this bike and actually have a lot of fun. Okay, so now we're gonna go back down this trail. I'm gonna try to kind of give you an idea of what the motor feels like, you know, and here's assist level one, and I definitely need a shift. Um, you do get some power output, which is which isn't bad in eco. Um, as I shift, it does kind of cut out on that motor a little bit. I'll find a good section where I'll be able to show you, hopefully, kind of what that pause in the motor feels like, which they do to again protect the drivetrain. So we're going to go downhill here, kind of see how this fork handles up. This is a pretty smooth trail, but there are some rocks. We'll notice again, it does not have a seat post dropper, which is fine. I personally love seat post droppers. I just feel them more comfortable. But you don't have to have one. And over these small rocks, it feels pretty fine. I'm gonna kick up power for this section here. See if I can kind of clear this. Yeah, I did that just fine. The motor felt very natural, engaged and smooth as I hit that like kind of that punchy part of that rock and got me right up and over it pretty easily.
So tires wise, I do like these tires a lot. Um, the Ardents, good grip, good overall kind of just good all purpose fast tire even. So definitely don't need to swap out the tires. I like how they spec it, 29 inch wheels, because those wheels just help you roll over things really well. And I feel nice and stable with how wide the handlebar is, the big wheels, the good tires. Yeah, for this price level, feels pretty solid and pretty good. Yeah, it grips easy through those washed out areas. So here's a hill. So I'm gonna start in gear three, put this kind of on turbo and see if I, I'm gonna need a downshift probably to make it up here. So we'll see how that motor does. So as I shift, yep, lose the power, but then it kicks, it actually kicks on fairly quickly. Um, the other trick you can do, if you don't want to downshift, is just up your power output. So go from like eco to trail or trail to turbo. Um, and it's kind of like shifting down a gear. And so I would say from that engagement, you know, the disengagement of the motor, as you're climbing a hill, it's there. I think it'll be possibly good for beginners who don't really know how to shift under, you know, how to not shift under load and then I'm snapping chains. That happens a lot on e-bikes. Um, I think it'll definitely protect the drivetrain. More experienced riders though, might get a little bugged by that. Just a little bit. It's okay, but if you've got something super steep and techy, that's where it might get you a little bit more. Yeah, so overall, really good feel to the EXC1. Like the geometry, you have entry level components on the drivetrain, on the fork, but they can easily handle, you know, a beginner to intermediate level trail. You get super like rocky, like rock gardens, you can feel the chatter or super, you know, lots of roots. So if you're riding that a ton, you're probably gonna want an air fork. But, you know, green, blue rated trails, not black rated, you're gonna feel very comfortable. Um, and even some blacks, you'd be fine. They'll just feel a little bit more. So yeah, I'm gonna give this kind of two thumbs up from initial, initial ride um, assessment from me. And I'm pretty happy with, with this Denago. I mentioned earlier that there are three frame sizes here, and that was really nice to see at the EXC1's price point. The medium fits riders from 5'5 to 5'9, the large can accommodate those between 5'10 and 6'1, and the extra large goes from 6'1 up to 6'5. Most of our testers are spread across the height range for the large, and we all had a great fit. I mentioned the bike's geometry before as well, and Justin talked about it a lot too. It really contributed to a great feeling ride. To dive into the specifics there, the head tube angle is 67 and a half degrees across all three frame sizes. The seat tube angle ranges from 74.1 degrees on the medium to 73 degrees on the extra large, and the reach goes from 444 millimeters on the medium to 484 on the extra large. Each of those design elements helped the bike to feel really well planted in the environments we tested it in. I personally really liked the handlebar width and how precise the steering was with that. Those 29 inch tires helped out a lot with comfort and traction, as well as a little higher clearance. So I think those were a great part of the ride quality as well. There were of course a few things that we didn't totally jive with on the bike, but they were pretty minor overall. The lights on the button pad on the left handlebar were pretty difficult to read without leaning way over to the side, especially the blue PAS indicators. So we definitely challenged Denago to find a more visible option in the future. And the pause that happens in the motor when shifting is something that we appreciate for beginners, but we'd really like the ability to turn that off or bypass it once good shifting habits are in place. 
And one last thing, we found the front fork to be helpful, but it felt like it had a little more flex than the fork you get on the EXC2. It was fine, but just keep in mind that this fork is more on the entry level side of things. Otherwise, we were honestly really impressed here. Even with entry level components, the EXC1 felt and performed really well. Things like the drivetrain and suspension are components that you might want to consider upgrading if you tend to hit more technical trails with rock gardens or lots of roots, but in general, this is an awesome and very functional bike. So does the EXC1's price point affect its performance? I mean, yes, I think it inevitably does to some degree just based on what is possible for under $3,000, but I think you'd have a hard time finding a better bike without paying more. Since the EXC1's frame has good geometry, it's a really solid foundation that you can add to an upgrade over time based on your budget and your needs. If you want to jump into mountain biking without a huge upfront investment, or you want to buy a single bike that you can ride to work but also take out on some trails, I think this is a great starting point that is both very capable and also just really fun to ride. We really only have a couple points of critique, those being the pause in the motor and the visibility of the PAS indicator lights on the control panel. We didn't think the pause was too bad, but we would like a way to bypass it, and for those who want an actual display, the EXC2 model does include a small screen. Again, we're currently reviewing that bike as well, so be sure to subscribe to the channel so you know when that goes live. If you want to take a closer look at the EXC1, we'll include a link in the video description down below. Using that link, if you decide to make a purchase, helps to support our channel with no additional cost to you, and we definitely appreciate it. If you want to go a bit more in-depth with our written review, we'll leave another link to that in the description as well. But that's all for today. Again, I'm John with Electric Bike Report, and this is the Denago EXC1.